Good evening, fight fans, and welcome to another edition of CES Boxing Classics. I'm your host, matchmaker and publicist, Michael Parenti. Now, tonight, we go back in time to November of 2005, a special all-New England fight card from the Convention Center in downtown Providence. Now, on the surface, you see some big names on this card. Joey the KO Kid Spina, Matt Godfrey, and of course, former Olympian in Providence native Jason Big Six Estrada. But the one who stole the show this night was five foot one Missy the Fury Fiorentino, an up and coming women's boxer from Cranston, Rhode Island, and actually a transitioned amateur kickboxer fighting for a world title for the second time in her career. Now, why was this fight significant? A lot of reasons. For one, Back in 2005, women's boxing was not at the, la the level that it is today, where it's being heavily promoted and marketed throughout the world. But CES boxing promoter and CEO Jimmy Birchfield Sr. was always at the forefront of pushing women's boxing on the masses and giving female fighters the same opportunity that their male counterparts have had for years. Among some of the examples, three-time world champion Jamie the Hurricane Clampett, former lightweight champion Elizabeth Mueller, former WBC world champion Kaylee Reese, world title challenger Alexandra Lopes, more recently two-time world champion Shelly Vincent, and Jimmy Birchfield has also provided a platform for young up-and-coming fighters like Marsha Agrippino, Amanda Pavone, and then recently signing long-term contracts with Shayna Fabiano and Marissa Valencia from New Haven. So, in a nutshell, CES has always been ahead of the curve in many ways in promoting the sport of women's boxing. Now, on this night in 2005, this was a big risk to take with a female headlining bout. Not a lot of promoters were doing it. Not a lot of promoters were willing to take that risk. And speaking of risk, Missy Fiorentino stepping back in the ring that night, coming off her first loss for her career just a year earlier, fighting for a world title in Japan, now taking on 18-2-1 Esther Schutten from the Netherlands. This was a 10-round bout for the IWBF World Featherweight title. Now, going back to the fight in 2004, Missy Fiorentino went on the road overseas to Japan to fight for a world title for the first time in her career in the featherweight division. She suffered a headbutt during the bout. Fight was close on the scorecards. Missy actually led through seven rounds. It kind of fell apart for her in the end, and her opponent took over and won the fight on the cards. And as anybody knows in pro boxing, it's always tough to go on the road and win. This time around, Missy had the fight in her backyard, Providence, Rhode Island, hometown fans cheering her on, and it was an epic clash and really one of the best in CES boxing history. Now, to take you through this fight a little bit before you actually watch it, Missy Fiorentino actually gets dropped in round three, although she thought it was a slip, and knew from that point forward that she had to be the aggressor and win the fight on the scorecards and dominate down the stretch in order to get the decision. So Missy started to work the body. She was more aggressive. She even suffered a headbutt later on in the fight and overcame all that to win and capture her first world title. So here it is, 10 rounds, Missy Fiorentino, Esther Schutten, live from the Convention Center, 2005, downtown Providence. Enjoy the fight. Thank you, Vinny. Here's your $20. This is what we thought would happen. Right off the bat, Missy's gonna charge Esther, and, and this is how it's gonna go the whole fight, because Missy will stay on her the whole fight. That's what she trained to do. There are those who would say that Esther is a little bit deceiving to some because they say that she looks like an attractive woman, which she is, but she's a hell of a fighter. I mean, if you look at her record in the Netherlands, she has won and defended a championship a couple of times. She has 18 wins. She was a world champion boxer. She's been fighting her whole life. And she's even, even more so than that, she's a security guard when she's not boxing. So this woman knows how to fight. I don't, mess, I don't mess with Missy, okay? <laughs> not Jamie, too many women do. <laughs> first couple of minutes that you see here, what are you seeing, Jamie, as the fighters already get out to it pretty quick? Um, well, like I said, Missy's coming forward. That's what she wants to do. She wants to go to the body. Um, Esther, she fights a lot like a European fighter. Um, I have fought in Sweden and Finland, and those women can fight. They're very schooled as amateurs, and I can see a lot of that coming out in Esther. So she, you can see she's got good skills. She's a smart fighter, and she's just trying to work angles and, and you know, make Missy come to her, make Missy turn as she turns. So, I, you know, this is going to be a good fight. This is going to be a good test for both girls. When you say working the angles, is that the European style? Well, a lot of the girls um, that, that I fought and that I've seen in those countries, they're excellent, excellent boxers. They're very smart. They they punch and move, punch and move. They're never in one place. And that's what I see with Esther. She's not let Missy, she's not letting Missy come straight in all the time. She's trying to move and trying to turn her. 
So she, she is fighting a good fight. Both boxers have gotten in a couple of good shots. That left hand of Scooton has certainly scored a few times. They have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe more than once. End of the first round. You're going to notice. exceptionally entertaining first round. Excellent. Um, I, in the female fights, they're two-minute rounds, so a lot of times you're going to notice a little bit more action compared to the male okay. fights. You that and, right here, uh, you know, these women the obviously are doing that. They're coming right at each other. Two, you're going to pull down Peter and pull back up. Senior. You can't go down and pull back and pull You finish with that shot, you weave over here again. Vinny, I think that's an important point that Jamie makes here. You're looking at two-minute rounds, so you're going to see a lot more happen. A lot of things happen a lot faster here. There's just not a lot of time to sit back and spend time. That's the most prevalent point of this fight. There are only two-minute rounds, and these girls are going at it. I can't believe how many punches Missy just threw. If Missy can continue this for ten rounds, I just can't see Estos holding up to the pressure that Missy Fiorentino's putting on. Like, I feel the heat from here. Look at it. She just keeps coming in, keeps pressing, keeps punching. Just the pressure alone, not even getting hit with the punches. It, it, that's a lot. It's a lot of heat. Scooten has certainly scored, but then again, Fiorentino comes right back. Shallon has great punches. Like, she has real sharp, sharp punches. She's a good boxer. There was a right that scooped through just a few moments ago, and Fiorentina, Fiorentina came right back and backed her up against the ropes. Peter Manfredo gave Missy great advice in the corner. You know, she's bobbing and weaving, getting out of the way of punches, but then she's staying right there. You know, he's telling her to, to punch after she bobs and weaves or get out, and he's right. Well, Missy's paying for it as she comes in, but she's coming right at her. I mean, you can see her head getting snapped a few times with some good shots by Scooter, but it's almost as if she's not being affected. Missy doesn't get affected. That's her game. She comes in. She can take an excellent punch. She can take anybody's punch at most weight classes. That's her game. She comes in straight. She gets hit, but she hits back. So it, let's see what Esther can do with it. I think that's going to be the biggest question here is, is Esther going to be able to take the same number of punches? and still be able to stand. She absorbed a pretty good left from Missy that time, backing up. And there's maybe the best move that she's made thus far. She got out from under, she got out from near the ropes and got away from Missy. You know, Ed, I think you're right. I think this is gonna boil down. If Esther can take a, a little bit of heat, if she can take these punishment shots from Missy, she will, uh, she will win this fight because you can see she's a little better boxer. But Missy's just putting on that pressure and if she can hold that up, sustain it for 10 rounds, Oh, what a big right hand by Scooton that time, an overhand right. Wow. How Missy Fiorentino is standing is a testament to the type of fighter that she is. is she is. We're back with more right here on Primetime Fights. decision or have a title shot once before which one are you looking at yeah okay gotcha I'm gonna use it Rhode Island Convention Center primetime fights Ed Berliner Vinnie Paz Phil Burton and Jamie Clampett joining us at the table here for this ladies championship fight Esther Scooton is in the black and red trunks First time in the United States fighting out of the Netherlands and Missy Fiorentino from Cranston, Rhode Island. Esther is doing something that I'm really impressed with. She's landing that right hand and she's moving. The other thing that she's doing that I like is uh, Missy leans in just a little bit when she moves her head. Esther's catching her with an uppercut and then following up and then moving. The biggest thing with Esther is she has to move. She cannot stay in front of Missy because Missy will outwork her. What you've just discussed isn't some of that, the four-inch height advantage. And down goes Missy Fiorentino from the left hand. I don't know if that was from a punch 
Rich or not. I think she was a little off balance, but we'll see it on the replay. She may have been off balance, but certainly that left hand is the one that sent her down. Yeah. I think it's a good point. There was a punch, but I think there was a little bit of a push, and like you said, Missy was off balance, so um, I don't think Missy was hurt. I've never seen her hurt. Um, you know, just she was off balance. Nice body work. When you talk about the way that Missy is coming in, is that not part and parcel because there's a four-inch height advantage from Scooping right now? Yeah, M Missy's got to come in, and, and she's got to she's got to throw bombs. And she did. She and threw she a is. right and a left. Finally caught Scooping flush wow. on those two punches. Backed her up with another left. Look at Missy go. <laughs> I love it. Missy smells blood in the water. Hopefully Esther's in good condition. Well, not hopefully for Missy, but if Esther's going to win this fight, she's got to be in great, superb condition. Scooton is just trying to hang on here and get out of this round. She's absorbed another couple of lefts from Fiorentino. Missy is the bulldog right now. But Esther's quietly getting her shots in also. Right? She absorbed a good left to end it, wide-eyed, as she comes back to her corner. Wow. Let's hear what Manfredo has to say. Okay? You better just continue on doing what you're doing. Throwing down that foot. Now, every time, you got to throw down that foot. You don't have to be so close. You can throw from here. One step. Let it go quick. Don't put the emphasis on the right hand. Put the emphasis on the hook. Speed, speed, power. Get down. Do it again. Okay? She's going to try to box you. Peter Manfredo Sr. calling for the left hook. Now here is the knockdown. Let's see exactly what happened. Now there was a good right. Now look at the right that Scooton threw. Certainly had Missy off balance, and then the left is the one that came in. She may have been off balance, but I think she definitely took a couple of shots. She was off balance. She went down because she got hit earlier, but then she was off balance. But we've got to remember, when this comes to the final decision, that round's going to be a two-point round for for Esther. So we got to you know, we got to think about that when this fight comes to the end. Four of a scheduled ten for the IWBF Featherweight Championship. A championship that is so important to Missy Fiorentino after she felt that she was robbed in a fight in Japan. Peter told Missy when Esther stops going to her left to throw the hooks, then she just did throw the hooks. She said that Esther, uh, Manfredo said that Esther's going into the hook. Two good means shots. She has to go to her right and, and Missy will connect with a, with a left hook. Missy is dealing out a tremendous amount of punishment against the ropes. Nice right hand. Scooton took a right hand that backed her up. He came back with a left hook. Missy's got to stay at that body, too, though, because I can see Esther is getting a little bit tired. Um, every time Missy goes to that body, she wilts just a little bit. My God, Shelton has to be in there incredible condition to withstand this. What Jamie Clampett said a few moments ago is true. When you look into the eyes of Esther Scooton, you definitely see somebody who's absorbed a lot of shots and she is tired. That's the second time that she has basically just moved forward to stop the barrage coming out of Fiorentino. That's exactly what she doesn't want to do, move forward. We're going to move out and be back with the fifth round of this scheduled 10 rounder on Prime Time Fights. Time fights and it's entertainment heightened right now between Missy Fiorentino and Esther Scooton. 
rounds. They have gone four of the more entertaining rounds of boxing that you will see just about anywhere. A technical fighter in Scoot, certainly more of a technical fighter, and a brawler in Missy Fiorentino. Oh, what a right hand! that came in and then followed up by the left from Missy Fiorentino. She had a big left that came in. Peter Mifredo wants Missy to throw hooks. She's throwing everything. Oh, she got a left hand in close. Scoop is hanging on. Another left. She's tan off now, and Scoop has got to come back and find something. This is only the halfway mark of this fight. Jamie, this has got to be awfully impressive for you to sit and watch Missy Fiorentino go to work like this. Definitely. I mean, Missy has improved so much as a fighter. Um, that was a nice combination. She, uh, you know, she comes forward not the best with her defense, but it doesn't matter because she can take a punch. She can, you know, she can take it all night. She's fighting an excellent fight. She's going to that body. She's throwing the hook. She's being a very smart fighter. She's doing what she has to do to win a championship fight. Good point. Scooton has to sit there and absorb the punishment. I have to say, though, Esther has heart. You know, she's getting hit with bombs. She's getting hit to that body. But you'll see her right there. She just threw a nice uppercut. She keeps coming back. She's trying. She wants to win the fight. Um, Missy's just too strong for her. That's what I see. is a tired fighter. You can see in the way that she's just trying to get through this round. And the big left hand that came and caught Scooten on the right ear. Wow. Esther Scooten is a tired fighter as she walks back to her corner. And that while was we a have great a couple round. of minutes here, no, that was, this has yeah. been an amazing five rounds to sit and watch here. While we have a moment, nice let's toss it to another here. member of our broadcast crew, Phil Burton, who has got Peter Manfredo Jr. Go for it, Phil. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, Pete, what do you think about these lady fighters? This is unbelievable, especially uh, Missy. She trains in my gym, and she's unbelievable. She's a style I used to imitate a lot. I used to be a banger puncher, and now I go back to where I used to do a uh, boxer puncher, and... Um, it's just exciting to watch these guys bang it out. You have a lot of fans back here, and today you're going to be receiving an award, the Contender Award. Camp up a little bit short in L.A., but what does this mean to you, to receiving the award back here in front of these fans? Well, it's just great to have fans like I have back here. I mean, the true fans and the true boxing people know that in L.A. I did truly win that fight. And, uh, I mean, a reward or no reward, it's just a reward to come back here and have fans like this, so. All right, Pete, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it. Good luck in the future. Ed, back to you, bud. All right, Phil, and there has been talk that Scott Pemberton says that he is going to fight Peter Manfredo Jr. next year. We will see if we have some time to discuss that a little bit later on. I've been informed not to talk about that, Ed. <laughs> Esther Scooton has come out, and she has tried to deal out a couple of shots. But quite frankly, Missy Fiorentino is throwing everything behind it. Look what a great amount of power that she's bringing right from the floor up. Look at Missy go. Very incisive. Scooten's best chance to meet Jamie would be keep moving. She's got to stay out of range of Missy Fiorentino, and she's, it doesn't look like she has the legs left at this point. I don't think she does. I think in the fourth round, uh, Missy really came out strong and just kept working the body, working the body. I said it earlier, if Esther keeps getting into the body, she is going to slow down. And I know I'm always a shorter fighter. Vinny, I know you've been there before. you got to work that body if you have a height disadvantage, and Missy's doing it beautifully. And in round one, I said, if Esther Shouten is not in the most magnificent shape of her life, there's no way she's going to be able to make this do 10 rounds. I'll tell you this, I think she is in good shape, but I don't think she's fought anybody like Missy Fiorentino. If you look at the fighters, she's fought some pretty good fighters, but certainly not by American standards. I think she's just fighting a, a, the type of a fighter that she's never seen before. Yeah, she's fighting a little dynamo tonight. Missy, Missy wants it really bad because she thought she won. I thought she won the world championship fight she fought over in Japan. She got jobbed by a hometown decision, and she wants this one bad. And Missy deserves it. Um, you know, she's fought a lot of good girls, and this is her night. This is her night to shine in her hometown. She has shown brightly in the first six rounds, and we'll be back with more after this on Primetime Fights.
whenever you need it, just let me know. This fight's just Round rather entertaining. I've, I've Convention Center, one of the more entertaining fights you will see anywhere at any time. Missy Fiorentino, Esther Scooten as they go to round seven of a schedule ten. Jamie, I only question if a short time between rounds is enough to give Esther Scooten time to rest because that is a that is an exhausted fighter right now. You know, every time Esther comes out, um, she comes out strong. She does have a good rest, or she seems like she's recovering well in between rounds. She comes out strong for maybe 25, 30 seconds. Then Missy just brings it on, and you know we're seeing what's happening. She's getting tired. Missy's breaking her down. You use that word tired. I think it's fair to say that between rounds, all three of us sitting here at the table, we all looked at each other and said, "I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just tired watching this fight." Oh, there was a big right hand. She caught Scoot and back it up, and she's hurt. But she comes back. That's why I'm very impressed with her. I mean, there's no. Everybody in this building knows Missy is winning this fight, but it's an entertaining fight because she's fighting someone who is quality. She's fighting a girl that is coming here to win, and that's another reason why it's such a great fight. If you could get inside the cranium of Missy Fiorentino for a moment, I would almost be willing to say that she's thinking to herself, what do I have to do to put this woman on the canvas? I've hit her with everything. Or, or in the mind of Esther Shouten, what does she have to do to keep this girl off her? I, that's, I think that's even more prevalent than what Missy's thinking. Get back on the plane. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Decided yet, though Missy Fiorentino, no doubt, is winning this fight on judges' cards. We talked about Missy Fiorentino a few moments ago in Kyoto, Japan. In September of 2004, she lost a unanimous 10 round decision to Emiko Reika, and it was a home judge decision. Losing that decision in a title fight, that is a memory that still drives Missy Fiorentino to this day. I've been training hard. I've been stepping up. Um, Japan was a world title fight. Um, and actually, everybody said I had won that fight. But out there, I'm not going to win out the decision. So I didn't come home with a belt. Um, and after that, I didn't really want to box anymore. Because of that, I said I trained so hard, I won the fight. But I didn't come home the winner. But after that, I, I took a time off and I thought about it and went back. I've been training hard. I changed my style a little. I've been training with uh, Peter Manfredo and Danny Macaruso. And, uh, so I'm just taking this as another step. We are lucky that she has decided to continue fighting in seeing an entertaining fight here in Rhode Island this evening. Ed Berliner, Vinny Paz, and Phil Burton, Jamie Clampett joining us here at the table this evening. We have three rounds left between these two fighters. Have you ever been to a point, Jamie, where you suffered a defeat at any point in your career and you wanted to walk away for a time? Oh, definitely. Um, we were all there when I fought Jane Couch, and that was devastating to me. Um, you know, I had there were some personal issues there, but the thing that got me over it was getting back into the gym, getting back to training, and um, you know, I, I feel like I'm a better fighter because of it. And actually, Vinny told me before the fight, whatever happens, this is going to make you a stronger fighter, and he was right. Vinny, you are a bit of a philosopher, even though you don't want to admit it, aren't you? I, I am. I have a lot of philosophy in me. A renaissance man, I might and say. And I know you might not think that, but it's true. Oh, no, Vinny. Believe me. I know from first-hand experience, my friend. Let me give you a little philosophy now. Missy said she wanted to quit, but she loves to box. That's why she came back. So she said, I came back, and I changed my style a little bit. She went from aggressive to super aggressive. <laughs> now, that's philosophical, Ed. I have not seen any fighter in recent memory 
that has come on and just thrown everything. Kitchen sink, the dishwasher. Oh, but that was a good left hand. Actually, Esther Scooten got a left and a good right in there. Let's give credit to, to Esther Scooten. Another that way. Left hook. Scooten may look like she's against the ropes and hurt, but she's had three good punches in this exchange. Scooter may be finding a little bit of a second win. I think she is. I was just going to say the thing is she uh, she is getting her second win and you know she's in a championship fight and this girl does not want to lose. Wow. Eighth round is done. There is only one fighter. I think we can all agree there's only one fighter maybe that we've all seen that could only that could stand against the ropes, take punishment and still win a fight. And that was Ali. He was the only guy who could successfully let somebody else punch themselves out and still win a fight, at least in my memory. I don't know if, I don't think Esther Scooten can do it in this sense. I don't know if Missy's got any limit to what she can punch. And here comes Esther Scooten. Watch a little bit in here. It is tough to point out any one good punch here, Jamie. There's the right. Nice uppercut inside. It, it doesn't matter what Shelton does. It, it, Missy is just bullying her, bombing her, just barraging her with punches. There's nothing Esther can do. Well, then let me do this. Jamie, I'll throw it to you. Two rounds to go. Missy is undoubtedly ahead on the judges' cards. Well, we say undoubtedly from what we believe. Your Esther Scoot coming in for the last two rounds. What do you do right now? I mean, if, if I was Esther, I would just try and throw as many punches as I could. The only chance that I see Esther having is knocking her out. And uh, Missy's not getting knocked out, I'll tell you that right now. But uh, Esther's got to go in there, finish the fight as strong as she can, and, um, you know, just just do what she can to survive. Jamie knows that, that Missy's not getting knocked out because I've seen some of the sparring matches that Jamie and Missy have had, some of the best entertaining sparring matches that I've ever seen in my gym. Oh, now there was a right hand that glanced off the head of Missy Fiorentino, but she comes right back with a good left right. Wow. And she stuck another left, and another left she stuck in on Scoot. Missy just feels no pain. I mean, I, I have to say, I am impressed with Esther. She's a great, great boxer. She's very smart, but there is nothing that she can do to Missy to stop Missy from coming. There is a ferocity in Missy Fiorentino when you watch her and see her coming at you. It is about as fierce a look as you will see from any boxer. And she absorbed a shot there and walked right through it. And she changed her style. She went from aggressive to super aggressive. I think she went from super aggressive to invincible, Vinny. I don't know many fighters at any weight class who could take this kind of punishment and still deal it out with power. I think that was fatigue more than anything else. Tonight it looks like it would have took a female Ali to beat Missy Fiorentino. That or somebody with a 40-pound sledgehammer. You can't bring a sledgehammer in the ring, Ed. My point exactly, Mr. Paz. Missy Fiorentino trying to pour it on. Scooten will hang on until the end of the ninth round. And this fight's gonna go close to the distance, at least. Let's go into the corner now. Missy Fiorentino and Peter Manfredo Sr. will have a couple of final words here. What you're doing, you're gonna walk in with a quick, fast jab, short little steps, okay? And then once you've got here, you're touching it here. That doesn't mean you're gonna step in anymore. Just stretch your right and your left go. Last round, first go. And I want you to get fucking careless this round, okay? Because she knocks you down, she wins the fight. All right, and then don't pull up in front of her because you've done that three times the last round. All right, you're done, take a step to the side. Okay, this is the last Laguna. Thank you, Randy. for the Let's have these two fighters. It is fun to say not many of us speak Dutch or speak the language of the Netherlands, but we did hear this is the 10th round. I don't think you really have to say much, do you, Jamie? 10th round, you go in there, just fight. Fight, get it done. Two minutes separate Missy Fiorentino from the championship that she was robbed of in Japan. A fight that still drives her. Esther Scooten, in her first visit ever to the United States, trying to prove that she can win a championship against one of the toughest fighters she will ever face. I don't think Esther expected Missy to be like Missy. 
I really don't. I think after the second round, she knew she was in for a long night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the final minute 30, expect bombs. More than we have seen. Missy doesn't even look tired. That's what amazes me so much. She is non-stop punch. For the left hand that Scooton just got in would stop a lot of oh, fighters. There's a big cut on Missy's head. A big cut over yeah. her Think, left eye. Oh, she got caught. Oh, boy. Well, she's got a minute, and then this fight's over, so we'll see what happens. Thank God it happened in the last round because Missy has got this fight. Bleeding profusely now from the tempo is Fiorentina. Both are going at it. Esther's bombing away to try to get her out of here. Pouring blood, pouring blood onto the ring from the face of Missy Fiorentino. It has become a bloodbath here suddenly with the cut. Fiorentino fights through it. Look at Missy go, little warrior. You've got to love it. The, the blood is squirting onto the ring right now, and finally Charlie Dwyer is going to separate them. He's going to try and let them go the final 25 seconds. I, li I like Charlie Dwyer not stopping this fight. It's a championship fight. It's in the last round. There's no reason for him to stop the fight. Missy is not even phased by the cut. The final 10 seconds, an open gash. Missy Fiorentino fighting through the blood, pouring onto the canvas here at the Rhode Island Convention Center. It is over. It's over. A bloodied Missy Fiorentino remembering a decision in Kyoto, Japan that cost her a championship. Esther Scooten having to have copious amounts of blood washed off her body, pouring from the face of Missy Fiorentino. Wow. The doctor going to work immediately to try and close the cut in what has to be one of the most entertaining fights that we have seen in New England in male, years. Male or female. Wow. Rocky yes. Wow. <laughs> Missy Fiorentino since that night in Japan has fought three times. All three have gone to a decision. All three have been a unanimous decision. And here comes the tenth and final round. I'll leave it to the boxers. Go ahead. M Missy just keeps coming. She knows it's the last round. She knows she wants to win the last round. That's very important in a championship fight. And um, I'm not too sure when the cut happened. It was before this. There we go. There's a little bit of a headbutt there. The girls are clashing heads. Missy wasn't affected. This was her night. And this is the way to win a world title. In, in your hometown. Esther, Esther being a proud champion, fought right to the end and tried to stop her. She did try to stop Missy because she knew, realized that's her only way to win this fight. And, you know, you got to give both girls mad credit. Esther Scooten standing right above us, her legs streaked with the blood of Missy Fiorentino. Still trying to get it cleaned off her in what has to be one of the toughest fights that we will see. Ed, the only thing that comes to my mind is what weight is Jamie? <laughs> there is only one word that comes to mind on this and it is gladiatorial Whoa. in the way that we have seen these two boxers go at it here this evening. It will go to the judges' cards to us, there's no real question, but let us go to Joey Birchfield and get the decision. Quite fans, we have a decision. Judge Stephen Schultz scores about 97 to 94. Judge Robert Paolino scores about 96 to 93. And Judge Dr. Clark C. Martino scores about 99 to 91. Your winner, Missy the Fury Gentino! Let us take nothing away from the performance that we have seen from Esther Scooten, the champion from the Netherlands, who came in on this night and gave us an entertaining fight, who gave everything she possibly had in this bout. But for Missy Fiorentino, 
she is now a champion, she can think back to that night in Japan and say, I have that title. Now we go to the champion. Phil Burton is in the ring with Missy Fiorentino. Phil? Congratulations, Missy. All right, there you have it. Your winner, Missy the Fury Fiorentino, capturing the IWBF World Featherweight title, the first of three world titles that she would go on to win in her career. Now, many would argue that this stretch in 2005 through 2008 was really the best of Fiorentino's career. Not only did she win this night to win her first world title, she actually moved up to lightweight a year later to take on Jamie the Hurricane Clampett in an epic all-New England clash at the Convention Center in Providence. She won the IWBF lightweight title that night and then a year later dropped down to super featherweight to defeat Ella Nunez to capture her third world title before retiring in 2008. So Missy Fiorentino had a tremendous career, always considered a rising star in boxing and delivered on that promise by winning three world titles in a two-year stretch at the height of her career. And also during that stretch that we just mentioned, also had a big win over 15-0-2 Cindy Serrano, who to this day still fights and is actually one of the bigger names in female boxing after taking on Katie Taylor in 2018 in an epic bout in Boston. So Missy Fiorentino has some great names on her resume, all of whom she's defeated. She won three world titles, retired at 17-2. and two. That's a tremendous career in anybody's book, especially for CES Boxing. And you consider what she did for the sport of female boxing. It really rings true and stands out that this promotion – does continue to advocate for the sport that so many other promoters have cast at the side. Missy Fiorentino also, by the way, as we mentioned, was an amateur kickboxer. So she's one of the few that have actually made a transition from one sport to another. Even though it's combat sports, there are a lot of different rules that come into play. And she managed that effortlessly and also worked full-time in her career as a Rhode Island deputy marshal, a job she still holds to this day. So Missy Fiorentino, always busy, always on the move, a bulldog in the ring, a tremendous person outside of it, and a real advocate for the sport. We hope you enjoyed this edition of CES Boxing Classics. We'll see you next time.